clumsily a little bit, I think. Um, yeah, I, I didn't go to art school, so that's definitely, you know, can feel like a bit of an insecurity for me sometimes in terms of that I don't know maybe some of the vocabulary or I don't know how, you know, that system works always. Um, but I do think because of my background in academia that I'm, I'm no stranger to just doing research and, you know, Googling it if I don't know it. Um, and I've been really, really lucky since I came back to Vancouver from Montreal a couple of years ago before the pandemic. Um, that I've gotten to meet really great, great artists who have really supported me and I've supported them. And I've realized that, you know, even the art school kids don't really know what the hell they're doing most of the time. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's it's really about that. It's more about having the tenacity to keep going through all the inevitable hurdles that are going to come your way as an artist. I, I, I don't really know where I live right now. Technically, I'm in Vancouver right now, um, but I was I was in Montreal for six years before the pandemic. And then, you know, since I was a teenager um, and a bit before that, I've been going back and forth from Croatia and a lot of my family lives there as well. Um, so, I mean, definitely in terms of the uh, components of my illustrations, my, my subject matter, really, really influenced by sort of Mediterranean fruits, um, some animals like geckos and things. Um, so I do find myself attracted to those kind of more Croatian, um, let's say like symbols, natural symbols, mm -hmm. just because it's kind of, you know, it's, it's in my blood, it's what, what I feel most deeply. And then in terms of Montreal and, and, and Vancouver too, like it, Montreal was really a, a place of support and still is for me in terms of art. I did um, a really big printed art fair there called Exposine uh, last fall. That was amazing. I met great artists and it's just a city where people not only create art but also support artists, consume art, buy art. They want to support you. So yeah, we'll see you know what the future brings. But for now, I'm I'm kind of pulling inspiration and support from from all those different places that mean something to me. Yeah, for sure. Uh, in terms of illustrators, the biggest one is Joe Sacco, um, who you know maybe you know a couple. You know, some people are familiar with him. Uh, so he's a cartoonist and a journalist, um, a Maltese American cartoonist journalist. And I kind of uh, came across him from his graphic novels, which are um, basically the like a summary of all his research done a lot in war zones, um, like in Bosnia during the the Balkan War, and then also in Palestine. He just did a book, published a book um, about the Northwest Territories and the Dene there. And what I love about his illustrations is they're highly, highly detailed, black and white. But he really plays with texture, with black work, um, and but it's still, you know, he's talking about these like really heavy themes and telling really intense stories. But at the same time, he does it in this sort of playful style that I really love. I love that kind of balance of like dark and light, playful and serious. Um, so that's been a huge inspiration to me, and particularly with texture from him. Um, but right now, I'm just like really into Art Nouveau and. Um, the, the Art Nouveau artists like, you know, Mucha and uh, Turov and Heikel and all these kind of guys. Um, just the, the line work again is something that really, really attracts me. But also that kind of palette, color palette that's really earthy and soft. And, and of course, this like coming back to this reverence uh, for nature as well. Lush, uh, you know, I mentioned before the kind of natural side of my inspiration, so that, that still holds true here because I'm using elements of nature and fruits and all that. Um, and so, so that's part of the, the sort of inspiration. And, and then the other part of the inspiration is more sort of around sensuality and, and sexuality. So when I do sort of markets and I sell my work, um, I always get sort of one or two people who come by and say like, you know, do these figs kind of look a little bit sexual? Like, you know, I'm getting some some sexual vibes from this fruit. Um, and yeah, and it, it definitely is. But I, I kind of enjoy that not everybody picks up on that. And I don't think everybody has to pick up on that either. Um, but yeah, so the, the other aspect of my inspiration is um, also paying homage to that kind of sensuality uh, that is really earthy and that's also really kind of everybody's own sensuality or sexuality 
that can be shared with others but that is not, you know, doesn't need to be. And particularly in the, this kind of like misogynistic society that we live in, a lot of the time that sort of sensuality that's really earthy and um, kind of eternal gets really trampled on um, when people feel entitled to one another's bodies. Obviously a lot of times that's um, women who are receiving that, but you know, other people as well. And um, you know, in my own life and in the lives of my friends and people around me, I've experienced that where people um, you know, experience non-consensual actions and um, even assault. And what um, has always helped me through it is kind of coming back to that kind of earthy sensuality that's sort of, um, that can't be killed in a way. That even when it's trampled, sort of like a piece of fruit being, you know, squished, like the seeds still can leave or, you know, be eaten by an animal or whatever and will will grow again. So it, you know, tying back to nature, in both parts of my inspiration, there's a quality of like celebrating something, celebrating sensuality, celebrating nature, but also resistance. Um, resistance to patriarchy, resist resistance to, um, you know, the capitalist destruction of the planet in, in both sides. But I don't, I want to, you know, highlight those kind of more negative experiences, but I don't want to get stuck on them because I think that's, um, that can be really self-defeating. So I want to, you know, use them as, as fuel, but to grow something beautiful from that.